morning folks. It's been a while since I've had a chat with you guys sitting on the MC07. Um, yeah, funny one today. Basically yesterday I got a bit stir crazy in the house. Been doing a lot of DIY. We've been renovating kitchens and building furniture and all that. And yesterday I was just... Sorry, I sat and I was trying to send me in a very busy... Well, I'm not going down there. It's absolutely underwater. <laughs> so we're just going to ignore the sat-nav for a minute. You shouldn't be getting... You might just about hear it in the background. But anyway, what I was saying was, yeah, yesterday was just at the point where I just didn't want any more, any more DIY jobs to do. I've had enough. <laughs> Still got a bit to do, but I'm just having a couple of days off. So yesterday I just thought, do you know what? I've been saying I'm going out on that MTS haven't for as long as I can remember. All right, the roads are a little bit damp and they are. This bike got absolutely filthy yesterday, purely because of waves sending me down some bloody farm tracks and stuff. <laughs> so I might put that video up. It's not much fun though, it's just me groaning about the roads that the sat nav sent me down because of, yeah. Because what I thought I'd do, I've, in the back of my mind, I've been um, watching my nephew who's just done a tour. He bought himself a GS1250. And, um, yeah, he set off. He lives on Guernsey, caught the ferry, set off, headed over to France, did a little tour up towards the Pyrenees, through Andorra, around some amazing mountain roads, and then back again through France, took in places like Le Mans, uh, gonna say either Toulouse maybe Bordeaux can't remember all those sort of places anyway down the western coast and it just looked really good fun even though it's on his own just booking Airbnbs and stuff and I thought yeah nice and I was um, I was just thinking about this bike and uh, when I took it just 250 miles down the road up to Manchester and um, what a painful experience that was <laughs> so yeah, I've got the GSX-R in the garage these days, so I've got two bikes which are kind of A-road sort of centric, if you like. This one and the GSX-R. But well, I didn't really have a firm plan yesterday. I just set off, well, I'm just going to go and clear my mind. And um, we're going to, I'm ignoring that road as well. I ain't going down there. No. Um, Yeah, and I basically just decided I'm just going to go and I want somewhere to head to support so Oakley Motorcycles in Maidstone. Uh, I know they've got a Yamaha showroom which I've not seen yet. They've got like the main place and they've got a little Yamaha showroom. I've never been able to find it. But um, they've updated the website now. It's got the um, postcode on it. So I thought, maybe let's have a go. So I had a go and I was like, that's no way it's down there. It was found this little gem of a place, got beautiful bikes in there, smallish showroom but nice guy in there working there and up and parked right outside the door was the bike that I've been contemplating. <laughs> I've been watching Lamb Chop Rider, I've been watching all sorts of people ride this bike and it looks really nice, it's a bit more expensive than I want to pay really but yeah anyway thought go and have a look see what it looks like in the flesh we got there it's parked right outside the door I got chatting to the guy and um, yeah anyway long story short almost did a deal there and then on the spot on um, their X display model in the showroom which is in the sort of icon performance colors just like the, the standard blue Yamaha wheels and some rather nice sort of paintwork in a couple of contrasting colours and all this sort of stuff so I thought yeah you know that looks pretty good man I'm liking it so I've been scratching my head and um, what I wanted to do originally was actually keep this bike um, and I thought, I've got a way to do that, but it's going to destroy my finances. And not only that, ongoing, just running the GSXR, this, the bike which I'm going to be looking at, which I'll tell you what it is in a minute. 
and uh, also with two learner bikes. It's like there's not a lot of there's no point buying this bike because it's kind of it's a sports tourer. And the idea is to use it to go up and down and see my mum. So I'll get to see her a little bit more often. And maybe do one of these magical mystery tours with my nephew. He's already talking about France and maybe a hop into Germany. So that sounds awesome. So um Mrs. is excited, she says we've got a little two-seater, nothing special, a little two-seater MX-5 and she's desperate to get that on the, abroad in the summer as well, get, with the roof down and all that. So she said, well, she'll take Ollie in a sports car and she might just meet us and we'll be um, on our bikes and thought, there's potentially for some good family memories, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I looked into it in depth last night, and there's a couple of, but I can finance it in three ways. So, I'm not sure whether I'm going to try and. At the moment, my cash ISA <laughs> um, is paying out more than uh, I can get on a 0% balance transfer on a um, credit card. So, if I can get them to accept a credit card, I'm pretty sure they won't. Um, because they get charged 3% and all this sort of stuff so anyway I'm going to ask because if he does that's a win because literally I can then balance transfer the whole price of the bike onto a 0% deal at 3.4% that's pretty good and it's you know and that's it done for a couple of years uh, I'll just volunteer to I'll just sell some days off back to the company work on some days off and I should clear that fairly quick at least that's the theory um, if they won't do it the, the reason I'm talking about ice is because I've got the cash there to buy it outright but like I say that's it, it, I'd pay less interest than I'd gain on the ISA if that makes sense so it makes sense to try and do it the credit card way plus it uh, affords me a little bit of protection if this guy goes out of business which we've had that conversation <laughs> um, so yeah it's nice to have the consumer protection and all that so I don't know well a bit of, bit of debating to go on with all that sort of shit so we'll see um, third way is that we'll um, put a deposit down and PCP it and then just trade it in in two or three years well, that's the plan anyway because the reason I wanted this bad boy this MC07 originally was because it's it's not like the 2025 model that's just been announced you know it's not got any of the bells and whistles on this so it's not going to go out of date it's a raw bike and I like a raw bike that's why I like my GSXR. that's a raw bike it's got no traction control got nothing I've never had a bike with any of that stuff on it so this is going to be a first when I get this bike which is I might as well tell you I keep beating around the bush don't I yeah so I'm looking at a Tracer 9 GC Plus the fact is Yamaha are doing a deal at the moment and uh, they're putting they'll give you 1500 quid towards it we're well, basically not 1500 quid off the ass they say they give you 1500 quid towards it effective <coughs> as you're buying it off them you're very effectively knocking 1500 quid off the price seems to be a lot of this going on and I think it's because the market's quite stagnant you know um, but this bike which I wasn't sure which one to go through they got like a I can't remember what it's called a grey one and a one with blue wheels let's, let's differentiate it that way and I was like nah, they both cost the same I don't know really I kind of like both of them in different ways uh, I'll put some pictures up on the screen you make your own mind up but yeah I couldn't make a decision I mean this kind of looks like an SP with its blue wheels and all that it's not but uh, obviously the GT Plus they can't really bring out an SP because it's got everything on it already anyway um, so yeah we've got we've got one of one with the blue wheels which has been on the showroom floor for a few months so it's pre-registered so you get it as a 24 rather than a 74 so they said they're knocking over 500 quid off of that so basically it's two grand off yeah still more than I want to pay over a mobile but I think if I want to do the big miles unless I go second hand GS or something like that but then I've been looking at them 
this thing's got adaptive cruise control, mate. <laughs> That's a big thing for me. It's like, yeah, I quite fancy that. Um, So yeah, um, so I'm getting one with blue wheels. And it was all going really well, all this planning and scheming and how am I going to pay for it and blah blah blah. And uh, plan A last night, although I'd had a half a bottle of wine, <laughs> was I'm going to get it and I'm going to keep the MT-07. And do you know what, that's my heart talking, I'd love to do that, absolutely love to. So I'm going to see what it's going to offer me on a trade-in. He was making the right noises yesterday, but he didn't give me an actual figure, so that's to be fucking these roads, man. <laughs> They're wet, the cars are avoiding summit as well, coming right into my lane. you got to love it, but you know, standard Sussex and Kent, they've closed off the roads between here and Maidstone, so you, no knobhead. Oh, God, they frightened me to death, these older people. They dive to the right line. It's like, <gasps> What are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to see what the actual deal is now. I've just been looking at insurance quotes. Oh my god! So this MT07, I've only had it. I mean, I came back to motorcycling just over a year ago. So I mean, I've been riding for over 40 years, mate. But yeah, I had a little. Whilst I've got my whilst I was sort of settling into my new job and stuff I didn't bother because we were renting houses moving around so it's been more than five years really we had a gap so it's I was, I was just seeing all my no claims just evaporate so, so we're starting from scratch and um, that was a year ago so I'm starting to get like a year on certain things and like with Lex Lexham are usually pretty good actually um, I went online last night in bed. I was like, right, what are they going to what are they going to quote me? Because, and it was like, oh, we can't give you a quote. Give us a ring. Oh, great, I'll do that in the morning then. I thought, yeah, it'd be all right. And um, then I went on the bike insurer, the comparison website. I mean, the cheapest one I got offered was about eighteen hundred quid. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, do I want to do? That? And to be honest, it was putting me off. I was like, no, nah, I don't think I'm just you know that's the cosmos that is the greater universe saying Marcus what the hell are you doing do you really want to spend a load of money on a motorbike at this point in time again I think I've discussed this in a very recent video you know on paper these things don't make sense but from a memories living your life blah 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 yeah they kind of do I might just have to sell some days off and I'd say back to the company to pay for it sounds easy but they usually give you all the shit duties when you do those. <laughs> so we'll see. I think I will. I'll probably do that. Um, what else? So yeah, so in desperation, because I've got my GSXR. Again, I was amazed with that, because my... Uh, which one was it? I think it was Sam's 50 when I was riding that. I had that insured with Bennett. So I phoned Bennett's up. I was like, and it was like literally they just sent me a renewal and it still had about a month or so to go on the policy and I was like alright mate I bought a GSXR and they were like have you really? I said yeah mate so just wondering what you're going to offer me on in insurance and you know what we did it for like 300 quid I was amazed they said you know what because we've sent you a renewal out we'll honour that we'll give you a year's no claims oh, happy days I've got a very robust shed and none of the other insurance companies will class it as a garage. Bennett's got me to describe it, and just, uh, this, that and the other, to within an inch of its life. And he went, yeah, we're happy that's a garage, mate. So, it's all, work, you know, they really work hard to get you a good quote. So, I'm singing Bennett's praises, and everyone I speak to there is personable. It's not like speaking to a droid. You know, they actually know how to talk to you. You have a laugh with him. I was on right laugh with this woman called Jane this morning. She is lovely. Anyway, so I phoned Bennett's going, you know, wonder what's this going to be like. And they're like, alright mate, yeah, 
I'm thinking about buying another motorbike, I said, but I'm struggling. They were like, right, give us the details. I gave them the details. She was like, right, brace yourself. And I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for two and a half grand or something. 600 quid. She's like, geez, do you know what? Yeah, I'm having that. So uh, 600 quid it is. Yeah, deal's back on. <laughs> deal's back on. And then I'm like to myself, can I still keep the MT07? Is that something I can still do? And um, it's very sensible. I just thought, you know what, mate? You're just about going to shoehorn that bike into your shed. We've got a few in there already. Are oh, you going to ride it? And you've got to then renew your insurance with Lexham in two months' time, which is probably going to be four or five hundred quid. I just thought, I'm hemorrhaging money every direction here. But now I love this bike, but. I'm going to have a Tracer 9 GT Plus mate with bloody radars and shit all over it and it's comfy but it's based on an MT-09 it's going to be fast it's got the like this is a CP2 engine which I absolutely love and I hear amazing things all the time about the CP3 so let's have a go at the CP3 um, yeah it's got to go it's got to go I can't do it I'm not you know Maybe if I had a few more years left in me work-wise, I'd keep it. But no, I'm 56, mate. I want to retire potentially in four years. Uh, I can't do that if I'm just hemorrhaging money every direction on every motorbike that takes my fancy. And uh, it's a shame though, because I do love this bike. I've put a lot into it. I was just writing out a list of all the extras I put on it. It's just a bloody long list. Uh, and they're all, you know genuine Yamaha extras, most of it, apart from that Puig screen, pretty much everything on it is genuine Yamaha, uh, apart from the Akropovich. <laughs> but I've, I was sort of braced when I was talking to the salesman yesterday, I was like, is he going to like the fact that I've put an Akropovich on it? Is he going to like the fact that I've mapped the ECU to the pipe? So I was like, yeah, yeah, I've got done it. So I've not done much to it, I said, but I, do, I have put a, a race line pipe on it. I said, as you probably heard, as I came around the corner. And, uh, and not only that, I said, um, I said, and with Matt for the ECU to it as well. He went, oh, nice. I thought, oh, that's a win. I was expecting a, I was expecting a wrinkled nose or a furrowed brow at that point. I didn't get one, so happy with that. Uh, yeah, so so far so good mate I say I've got three ways to finance it, not quite sure which it is I've, got, I've listed them in order of what's best for me <laughs> like you do and, um, oh, we'll see so yeah, so we're going to have a look at this well, not, we're not having a look at it, we're hoping to do the deals but, but yeah, it's going to be a sad day when this thing goes but it'll be interesting to see what kind of money you puts down on it or whether it's just going to be a really <laughs> probably still want the other bite to be honest but if he offered me a stupid amount I'll just sell this myself I think um, but I'd rather not it's too much like a, a it's too much of a ball ache I get people just dealing with all the bloody tyre kickers and whatnot yeah I hate it So yeah, so I'm hoping he's available. I know we do a bit of training on a, we said he's, they'd be finished doing the training by half ten. So I left up the house about, I don't know, quarter past-ish. Um, and I'm hoping he doesn't now take the piss that we're actually talking deals. Because that would be rather unfortunate. Because they've done all the servicing on this bike. I bought it somewhere else, but this is like my local Yamaha plates if you like. So they, they know the bike, they've done the bits. And I've got all the stuff from dark motorsport regarding the retune and stuff so it's all good mate um, yeah so I don't quite know what I'm walking into here but unless he's trying to, if you're going to try and squeeze too much money out of me I'll just walk away from it because I'll just keep this but you know I, don't, I do think if we get this tracer working 
get the, get a good price for this and just I'd rather not PCP it. I just not that I need to own it or anything, but I don't really want a fixed monthly payment. Even though from what we were talking about yesterday, it ain't gonna be much. So we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, so at the moment we've we left I've been wittering for hours. <laughs> Seems like it no not hours, it's a 40 minute ride this. And um, yeah, we left um, Left my house in Flimwell in the High Wheel to Sussex. Uh, I think we've probably been trundling through Kent really. Headed up to Goudhurst, hung a left because they've closed the normal roads. And we're heading across country to, uh, that was Marden back there. I think we're heading to Limden, is it? Don't know, don't really know this neck of the woods to be honest. But anyway, I know the, well the sat nav knows the way, and this looks familiar now ish. Um, don't do it, don't do it. He didn't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're heading into Maidstone, or the industrial sort of area of Maidstone, if you like. And that man waited too. Thank you, buddy. So yeah, we'll see. Roads are alright-ish down here. I'll tell you what though, when you get a bit closer into Maidstone, there's some flipping awful roads. So we're going to try our best to stay off them today. I think where this tries to turn me right, the plan is, if we go straight on, it takes me to a main road and then hangs a right, and I should avoid all that shit. Let's try it. Yesterday, I came out on this bike was gleaming, gleaming, mate. It was like a new pin. It was absolutely spotless. By the time I got to the bike dealer, <laughs> trying to show him my nice bike, it was absolutely it looked like I'd been off-roading. And when I got home, I didn't realise when I was in the shop, my back of my jacket, this one. Again, looked like I've been mountain biking on it or something. It was just it, obviously that tail tidy. It does absolutely nothing to stop mud coming up because obviously I've shortened it <laughs> just for a sportier look and just from a practical side of things in the wet. No good, mate. Absolutely no good. All right, all right. <laughs> Touring guys, this is what puts me off tourers. They're also bloody serious. I don't know how they get fun out of it. They just kind of sit very upright and they just go. You nod at them and it just don't even acknowledge the fact that you're even part of the surrounding scenery. It's just like... Linton, that's the what I was after. So yeah, so up here, I think it was roadworks, there was yesterday, and then we get to sort of like some traffic lights. Normally you hang a right, and then it tries to take you through some bloody farm track on the left, over towards the industrial area. It brings you in through some sort of housing estate. I ain't doing that today. We're gonna try something different. I had a little look on the route, and we shall see what it looks like. Not waiting here. Are we waiting here? I oh, can't be asked today. Let's just play the game. Oh, fuck it. Let's just go. I wanted to make the lights though. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Hey geezer in your big scoot oh. uh, So yeah, so we'll see. We shall see. I'll try and get some photos of it actually. Yeah, it's clever this thing. It's got like I say it's got a big radar on the front, it's got adaptive cruise control, so apparently you set a speed and then you've got is it three or four distances? I can't remember. Anyway, you have various distances from the car in front that you can set, depending on how brave you are. And um, the bike 
just fucking does it. It just goes, yeah, 70, all right. You get someone like this to pulling out in front of you doing 60, bike slows down at 60, maintains the desired gap. They speed up, you speed up, it tops out at the speed you've selected. Oh mate, it sounds ace. Um, the other thing that radar does is it monitors your braking. So, some people don't like this, I think it's a really good idea. It's like, you know, if you are, apparently it doesn't do, it won't put you, if, if you are braking and the bike can sense a closing speed to the, whatever it is you're in front, now Siri's in on the X again. That's fine. Good to know. Um, all right, we're going. Str it's going to try and send me right. I want to go straight on. So this is a bit of a. Um, this is a Voyager Discovery, mate. But I'm going to stay at the back because I've got a frigging clue where I'm going. So I'm just going to try and play the game a little bit here. I think. Leave a bit of room for the guys to get down, like him, uh, whatever he is. Yeah, so, I think, um, yeah, we'll, tr we'll try down there. Oh yeah, braking. That's my age, you know. Oh, hey, oh, road rage, love it. Um, yeah, so if you're braking, it thinks, bloody hell, he's going to hit that the bike this is it'll apply more brakes it won't break for you but it'll augment your braking I've heard that if you're only braking let's say with your back brake and it's like you know what mate if you're just braking with your back brake you ain't gonna get away with this you are gonna need to your front brake it'll put your front brake on for you but it's got a it's got a you know an IMU and all that what it won't do is it won't do that if it senses that you're leaning are you going around the corner because it don't want to unsettle your suspension so you've got to ask yourself absolutely not um talking to the sat nav it's again oh it's desperate for me to go this is where this doesn't work <laughs> let's see we'll we'll persevere i think if we come to a big other road i think it should send us to the right in a minute anyway so yeah so, so it's clever it thinks for you i mean i'm an airbus pilot so i'm used to automation and i'm fairly comfortable with it so i think you just have to learn the system and i think once you've learned the system and you know when it's going to do there's a famous saying in airbuses and it's like and there's a there's a youtube channel actually from one of our training guys at work um and it's his channel's actually airbus what's it doing now because when the airbuses first came out and boeing's were more prevalent which are less automated well they were i don't know much about boeing's these days um yeah the most common thing you'd hear from airbus pilots of the old genre although i've been flying it for the best part of 20 years now was what's it doing now because it'll do stuff and you're like what the hell but you just have to learn it and once you learn it and you know it and it becomes like an old friend you, you get to know it and you know when to monitor it and when it might screw you and when it might do something weird and all this it's the only way to do it and i think it's going to be the same with this level of automation on a motorbike you've got to know what it's going to do and when it might do it and what that's going to feel like and ride accordingly so yeah learning curve involved but I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that um yeah but interesting that um Lexham wouldn't insure me until I had two years no claims and everyone else was looking for two grand Bennett's to the rescue just makes me wonder if people are crashing these a lot or if they're just desirable and they're getting nicked a lot who knows so who knows Right, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. It's a rabbit pretty much all the way here. Uh, so, yes. Yes. Let's try and cheat. Let's see. Looks wide enough. Just about. 
just about, mate. I think it's going to nip round this van and hide in here. Let's do that. Let's do that. This is bandit country for me though, mate. I ain't got a clue what these roads are or where they are. If the sat nav decides to give up, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. Well, this is better than the farm trap, mate. A lot better than the bloody farm track. At least I'm not covered in mud. I do wish Waze would tell you about speed cameras, even, it generally will if you're over the speed limit, it goes, ah, speed camera ahead. <laughs> what does it say, speed trap, it says something weird like that. But, I just wish it would tell you, because obviously it doesn't catch it, and if you miss it, and decide to accelerate, then you're a bit screwed, mate. <laughs> mm. I suppose you should be, I do respect that. He says, I do generally respect the thirties, kind of. I, I ride in the spirit of them, put it that way. You know, so we're keeping up with traffic here. So, it is what it is. Oh, it's 40 anyway. So what am I talking about here? It's not 30. I knew that. I knew that. So when I come out of the top of it, I think I need to hang a left and then it'll ways will bring me around away from the underwater roads, which I did not enjoy yesterday. Mm. It's a bit of a long way around, but small price to pay to not get covered in crap, basically. Come on, mate, just do your normal speed. I'm sure that's not it. That must be too submissive. I'm chilling. Chilling out. Now we're going straight. We're going straight. this turn, it ain't there. Well, I think it's this one. Yeah, this is why I didn't believe it yesterday, because it's like, there's no sign, well, there might be a sign for it. I didn't see one, though. No. You wouldn't think there's a Yamaha dealer tucked down here. See, so, yeah. Oh, it does say Yamaha. Uh, you got to look on that. Didn't do that, did I? Well, there's a tracer, and here we are, Oakley Yamaha. See you guys in a bit.